Right, let's get to it. Final thoughts on Vladimir Klitschko versus Tyson Fury. Um, regular viewers of the channel will know I've been discussing this one for many, many, many months. Uh, but it's time for the final prediction, final last minute thoughts and analysis. Firstly, before I get into it, let me say, really, really, really looking forward to the fight. Um, you know, it's kind of got one of those weekends for me where the weekend is dominated by a single fight. You know, I'm looking forward to it. I'm having people around, going to try and make a bit of an event of it. Um, and it's a, a very, very exciting fight. You know, I've got that, that feeling um, that fight fans get for these big events. The weigh-in today, let's talk about that. Um, a lot was made of Tyson Fury weighing in lighter uh, than people anticipated. I think he weighed in at 246 pounds, and most people kind of look at him, see him 6 foot 10, 6 foot 11, however tall he is, and kind of think he's going to be a heavier guy than that. Certainly there are reports of him being well into the 20 stones, you know, which is up near the, the £300 mark uh, when he's out of training camp. Let me say that I wasn't actually surprised that he weighed in that uh, light. I wasn't surprised. Um, Tyson Fury is a guy who in the past has struggled to get motivated for fights, who's had some sort of discipline problems outside of the ring. We know he's a guy who um, doesn't necessarily always live the athlete's lifestyle outside of the ring. Yeah, he even jokes on his Twitter how big a fan he is of um, fast food or how big a fan that he is of, of Guinness. So it's it's no surprise. And if you actually think about Tyson Fury's career and you think how there's been huge periods of inactivity in that career, how there's been numerous pullouts during his career, how there's been multiple fights against lower level opponents, it's perhaps not actually a surprise that for a fight like this, which is by far the biggest fight of his career, and for a fight like this where he's had such an extended training camp and clearly been so dedicated to boxing, that he is going to weigh in lighter. You know, Tyson Fury is the kind of fighter who's come to the ring with body fat before, um, so it's, it's no surprise to me that that's, there's less of that for this fight. You know, I've seen some people concerned, some people saying they're worried he's overtrained. some people concerned saying they're worried that it's going to be a very physical fight and a weight advantage would have been nice. You know, they weighed in pretty much the same. And people talk about Klitschko's tendency to hold. Wouldn't it have been nice if Tyson had had an extra stone on him? I don't necessarily see it as an issue. You know, the fact that he's weighed in this light. And let's be honest, he's actually weighed in this light before. I've seen him weigh in this light when he fought Kevin Johnson, when he fought Martin Rogan. You know, it is lighter than he's been in in recent fights, don't get me wrong. Um, but then again, isn't that deceptive? You know, I was at the Derek Chisora um, weigh in and he weighed in wearing clothing so you know, it's hard to tell how light this actually is especially considering you know he's been there before well, I don't think this is necessarily an indication of overtraining I think it's an indication of proper training whereas before we maybe haven't had a fully trained Tyson Fury um, you know because he, he's lacked the motivation for the fight and it hasn't necessarily brought the best out of him um, so I'm not concerned about the weight you know, it, I, I wouldn't want him lighter, let's put it that way, but I'm not concerned about the weight at this stage. Um, you know, obviously we can see how it goes tomorrow, but, you know, as for him being heavier, and would that help with the clinching and with the wrestling tactics provided by Klitschko? Yeah, it possibly would, but what about rounds 9, 10, 11 and 12 if we get there, you know? Maybe it's going to be a lot harder for him to perform his best if he's carrying around a stone of needless weight. So, you know, there's pros and cons with all these things. Um, Vladimir Klitschko, as always, you know, looked in, in good shape. Um, he does look a bit older to me. You know, I know he's getting older. And I know that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a reflection in the fight. You know, the fact that he's got um, one or two grey hairs coming through. But to me, he's, he's starting to look older. And as they say... Uh, the person who, I think Dwyer says this, the person who always wins in uh, boxing, the only undefeated opponent, is Father Time. Uh, and that is possibly a factor in this fight, the age difference. Um, you know, the fact that Tyson's coming into the prime of his career, whereas Vladimir Klitschko, I guess you could say, is, is a man who's nearly in his 40s. And on to the fight itself, stylistically. You'd be a fool to rule out Vladimir Klitschko. He's a dominant champion. He's performed at a much higher level than Tyson Fury. Um, he clearly hits very, very hard, and he does have the power to change, you know, to win this fight. He does have the power to stop Tyson Fury. 
People talk about him hitting Tyson Fury, however, like it's a done deal. And I'm sure there will be times in this fight where maybe Tyson Fury does have to take a punch. But I think the Tyson Fury of old, where he was getting hit, where he was getting dropped by lesser fighters, seems to have disappeared. I actually thought Tyson Fury put on very mature defensive performances in his fights against Christian Hamer, in his fights against Derek Chisora. And people hark back to his fight against Steve Cunningham, but that's actually quite a long time ago now. And Tyson Fury's improved and matured a lot then, uh, especially being trained by Peter Fury. So yeah, Vladimir Klitschko does have a really, really big chance in this fight. Um, and he deserves to be favourite. You know, we'll talk about betting when we're on the subject of it. Um, I think the odds here are wrong. Uh, Skybet today went 9-2 to two on Tyson Fury, um, which I've taken. And taken fairly aggressively by my standards. You know, um, at the end of the day... Tyson Fury doesn't deserve to be a 9-2 to underdog in this fight. I see him more as a 5-2 to underdog or 3-1, to you know. And when, when the odds initially came out, that's what he was, like 3-1. to And I thought the bookmakers had priced it about right. I wasn't necessarily too motivated to get involved in those odds. But towards the fight, he's drifted and drifted and drifted. And now we're seeing 9-2. to two. It was actually a Black Friday special. Uh, so, uh, you know, I guess it doesn't matter what price they are if they lose. But assuming he uh, does the business tomorrow, I'll be a happy man. And I know a few others who will be as well. So, um, yeah, I think Tyson Fury is underrated um, from a betting perspective. Because if you look at what he brings to the table, he does a number of things that Vladimir Klitschko doesn't like. You know, Vladimir Klitschko has perfected his style to the extreme. He's a superb fighter, but he does what he does every fight. You know, it's always the same fight from Vladimir Klitschko. He's quite clinical, quite robotic, very, 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 um, you know, he's got an A game. Is there a B game there? I mean, there hasn't needed to be a B game. But what does Vladimir Klitschko not like? One, I perceive he doesn't like southpaws. Two, I perceive he doesn't like fighting on the inside. Three, I see him as uncomfortable being hit to the body. Those are all things that Tyson Fury brings to the table that could make things an awkward night for Vladimir Klitschko. There's also the hype dynamic thing. You know, people say, oh, Vladimir Klitschko's proven he can fight against tall fighters. You know, he beat up Marius Wok. Marius Wok, I've got to be honest, he's awful. You know, he looks like he's got a stone of concrete in each of his book, uh, boots. You know, he's a very plodding, slow, unathletic guy. Tyson Fury's a different kettle of fish to Marius Wok. Tyson Fury is a combination puncher with speed, with agility, who moves around the ring remarkably well for a tall guy. And, you know, when I talk about Vladimir Klitschko having an A-game, for me, that's one of the most attractive things about Tyson Fury as a fighter. It's his versatility. It's the fact that there's so many strings to his bow. Because he can, he can fight on the outside and compete in a battle of the jabs. But he can also fight on the inside and to my money he can fight a lot better than Vlad on the inside he's got much more punch variety than Vlad you know Vlad's got good jab good straight right good lead left you know Tyson Fury you see throwing an elite level uppercut you know it has he has been known to hit himself on the chin with it but you know he throws a good uppercut um he throws one of the things I really like about him is the fact that he throws combinations and changes levels during the combination he'll go head body body head you don't see Vladimir Klitschko doing that you know Tyson Fury one of the things I like about him is, say he's losing this fight after three rounds. Peter can say to him in the corner, Tyson, you're not winning this fight. Let's go southpaw. Tyson, you're not winning this fight. Let's try and take it on the inside. You know, another thing here is, Vlad is a guy who's very, do uh, very, very, very... Um, he fights in his comfort zone of jab and grab. And if Tyson Fury takes him out of that comfort zone, it really is hard to predict how Vlad will cope. Tyson Fury could negate the Klitschko jab because of his movement and the fact that he's actually got longer reach and a longer jab than Klitschko. He could also negate the grabbing technique by the fact that he's bigger than Klitschko and he's not going to be so easy to hold as a smaller 6 foot 2 type heavyweight than Povetkin was. What I'm getting at is, not only does Tyson Fury have 5 or 6 things to make Vladimir Klitschko very uncomfortable in this fight, but Tyson Fury's got so many different methods of winning this fight. Whereas for me, Vladimir can only win this fight by using his A-game, because that's all he has in his locker. All of these things make me think that Tyson Fury is a very likely winner of this fight, especially when you factor in the age dynamic and the fact that Vladimir Klitschko was arguably unconvincing in his last fight against Bryant Jennings and foreseeably is only going to be going downhill. It's unlikely that Vladimir is going to massively improve from that fight as he nears 40 years old. 
Um, it's all about levels, you know, boxing's all about levels. Tyson Fury's performed at a level where he's so he can beat Steve Cunningham, he's so he can beat Derek Chisora, he's so he can beat Christian Hamer. Can he step up to that world class level? You know, Vladimir Klitschko, elite fighter, top 10 heavyweight of all time, in my opinion, 10 years of dominance, pound for pound, top three, in my opinion. Can Tyson Fury reach that mountain? Can he go up to the penthouse of world class boxing? Um, we won't know for sure till tomorrow. We know that he can dominate um, the league just below that, you know, the top 15, top 20 of the heavyweight division. Can he get into that penthouse of the heavyweight division? That's what we'll see tomorrow. And, you know, as I say, I'm not ruling Vladimir Klitschko out of this fight. This is a 50-50 fight. It's in Vladimir Klitschko's home turf. Um, you know, he's the supreme athlete. He's never been outpointed Vladimir Klitschko, uh, and he hits very, very hard. He can change the fight at any moment with a knockout. You know, credit to Vladimir, respect to Vladimir. I'm picking Tyson Fury. I don't think Vladimir's going to like the height. I don't think he's going to like the switch hitting. I don't think he's going to like the inside game. I don't think he's going to like the combinations to the body. I think Tyson Fury has got too many tools for Vladimir Klitschko. I think he's got a broader array of skills. I think age is a factor. I think size is a factor. Um, and I just think it's Tyson Fury's time. And he's hitting Vlad potentially at the right time here. Didn't look great against Jennings. Getting on a bit. Um... I see it as a tight fight. I see it something like 51-49 to Tyson Fury. I just lean to him. Uh, real, real tight. I'm not surprised if Vladimir wins this fight. But I'm picking Tyson Fury. I put my money where my mouth is. 9-2 to is a ridiculous price, so I've taken it. As for whether Tyson Fury wins by KO or by points, it's hard to win by points in Germany. I don't rule it out, however. Uh, you know, Tyson Fury isn't the biggest puncher in the world. And I think too much is made of Vladimir Klitschko in a bad chin. You know, we've seen Vladimir Klitschko take some big punches over the years. Seen him take David Hayes' famous haymaker and, you know, stay on his feet. It's not as easy as hitting Vladimir and knocking him out. I could see Tyson Fury landing a sneaky uppercut on the inside to cause him bother. But I'm kind of sit on the fence on how Tyson wins the fight, whether it's by points or by KO. Both are foreseeable. Both are possible. Fury isn't the biggest puncher in the world. Vlad's chin, I think, is underrated and much maligned. But I do acknowledge that Tyson's going to have to put on a hell of a performance to win on points. I think he's capable of it. That's my final thoughts. Let me know your thoughts on this fight. Let me know your predictions, who you're picking, what method of victory. I'm buzzing for it, as you can probably tell. Really looking forward to it tomorrow. Thanks very much for watching.